So an unlikely duo kind of started off this conversation yesterday. Jack Dorsey responded to a tweet by Cardi B. He And she asked if crypto is going to replace the dollar. And Jack said, yes, Bitcoin will. Then he started tweeting more about Web3. And he said, you don't own Web3. The VCs and their LPs do. It will never escape their incentives. It's ultimately a different centralized entity with a different label. Know what you're getting into. Now, we talk a lot about all of the VC money piling into Web3, Web3 solutions, Web3 apps. And so I'm going to kick this off to you, Zach. Love the camo. I'm just noticing it now. Thanks it's like so a floral great. camo. Floral yeah, camo. I love it. Make, make love, not war. Festive camo. Um, yeah. what, what do you think of this? I mean, he, he really does have a point, and it's something that we don't often talk about when we're talking about the VC money piling, piling into these Web3 apps because they're so cool. I think Jack Dorsey's Bitcoin maximalism is cute, quaint, and old-timey at this point. I think that's what we're seeing here. Uh, <laughs> The, the guy, the guys, the guys just unabashed Bitcoin maxi, and, he, and that's that's just you know that's just what it is, right? I mean, all all you know, all all power to him, right? If he wants to go out there and you know sound the BS alarm on uh, every VC and every big brand in the world uh, aping into the Web three movement, I think that's totally fine and good. But I think he is discounting the fact that people use these tools. Uh, to achieve some degree of financial freedom. And I think that's what mm -hmm. uh, these systems are ultimately striving to become. They often start uh, heavy on the VC side. You know, look at Uniswap, right? Definitely started out with some VC cash, but that's a decentralized exchange that's powering all sorts of applications across a more decentralized internet if we want to be uh, circumspect about our terms. So uh, I don't know. I think um, it does seem like uh, a blast from the past, uh, Jack Dorsey's kind of view on Bitcoin being the one coin to rule them all. You know, he, he's, he's, he's really close to saying Ethereum is a scam and sort of uh, reopening some of those old wounds. Uh, and it's great for engagement. It's great to have a, a, a rousing debate in which everyone wants to be on Twitter to have this debate uh, into the wee hours of the morning. Um, but to me at this point, I, I, I sort of, I, I kind of find myself more in the camp of those being like, hey, maybe it's time to give Ethereum a second shot here and think about the ways in which these smart contract based layers are powering applications that are useful to people who are not Chris Dixon of A16Z, who are not some other Silicon Valley venture capitalist uh, before sort of painting with that broad brush. But hey, man, made for some good clicks. I'll toss it down to Will. I'll take it a different direction. Kind of disagree with you. Agree with you on some points, but I think that there is like a new strain of Bitcoin maximalism that's kind of going around right now. That is actually a little better than the old strain. I this think the old strain was always talking about. Yeah, this is like a variant. You're right. You're totally right there. It, <laughs> the old strain was always like, let's talk about the DAO hack. Let's talk about Vitalik. Let's talk about like all the different schemes that the early Ethereum people were involved with, and all these scams and whatnot. And the new strain, I think, has a little bit more logic and uh, cohesiveness to it. And it talks about the uh, value of open source protocols and talks about like the value of developing tools that actually address needs as opposed to addressing uh, wants that people in Silicon Valley have. And right or wrong, I think it's a refreshing take that there is like a new kind of argument coming out of this Bitcoin maximalist camp because I think the old arguments were getting pretty tired. I think Jack is a very good bellwether for that argument. So if you look at his critiques yesterday, they were just critiques, right? He was talking about how investors often they get the best cap table whenever they come to the table and are buying tokens. Who gets the best tokens? The people who are early, the people in Silicon Valley who are helping develop it. And yes, that is often how capitalism just works. And that's just how these projects tend to work. And the only reason they could get off the ground is because there's early investor money. But I think you have to note that that is very different than how Bitcoin launched. And I think that is kind of what he's ringing here. He's ringing the alarm bell that, hey, Bitcoin and these Web3 projects, they're not the same because they had different foundings and they had different token allocations. I think that's a pretty fair place to argue from. I do agree with you, Zach, though, that a lot of these other things, like they need to be taken with, like they need to be more generous takes here and there, especially on things like Ethereum, which uh, it might have not moved to proof of stake. ETH2 isn't here yet. But it is doing a lot of the things that it's promised to do for years. Naomi, I want to get your take on this, though, because I feel like you might agree more with Zach today, but I don't know. We'll see. 
Yeah, I, I actually completely agree with uh, with Zach. Um, I think that a lot of people demonize VC money as it's like this big, scary thing. Like people have money, they're investing in it. This is terrible. It means that somehow they have ownership over a program, uh, over a, a, a protocol. I think that in order to determine whether someone has ownership over a protocol, look at how decentralized it is in terms of like, are there barriers to entry for people contributing? How closed off is the GitHub? Are they actually, you know, allowing uh, pull requests from the wider community? Like you have to look at that. Don't just pay paint all of VC with this brush and say like, oh, money equals bad. Like I, I hate that rhetoric because it doesn't. Money is what fuels this ecosystem that allows for development. You know, you have all these interesting, like wonderfully technologically innovative tools that are on the cutting edge right now. And we could push further into that future or it might just halt. And it depends on whether or not we can get developers to work on these things, right? And sure, there are a lot of people who are altruistic and are giving their time and who are receiving a much lower pay than they would have just working for Facebook or something like that. Um, but they're, you know, choosing to give to these projects. But, you know, how sustainable is that? And a lot of these projects are being sustainable by getting money to fund them. So I think that ultimately it doesn't depend on whether or not there's people giving money to these projects because people give a lot of money to decentralized, completely decentralized projects or they sponsor individual developers. Like there's so many ways that money is fueling this system. Um, but I think to just paint all VCs with this, like it therefore it's centralized brush, I think doesn't make much sense to me because it completely depends on the, the project.